Hi there, so my name is Matthew Morgan and I work as a casting director for Morgan Casting. I've been doing it for about 16 years and I truly love it. I work in Canada and the United States and I have an office in Toronto, New Orleans and Canton, Mississippi. I'm originally from Mississippi and um, how did I end up being a casting director in Toronto for so long? I'll tell you a little bit about my journey. Um, once I graduated um, from college, I'd studied international business and foreign languages, uh, studied French and Spanish. I got a job in Toronto, in Mississauga actually, <laughs> uh, from Mississippi to Mississauga. I was working for FedEx in their French e-com department. And after about six months of doing that, um, you know, I really wanted to follow my dream, which was to be an actor. Many casting directors uh, start off as actors. And um, I did just that. Um, I signed up with a talent agency, APA, uh, with Armstrong Men. I was modeling and acting and going on go sees and auditions. And uh, an amazing casting director named Shasta Lutz of Jigsaw Casting needed an assistant, and she hired me. And I learned so much, for which I'm so grateful, uh, working with her and Tara O'Grady and Melissa Casson at Jigsaw. And uh, I did that for four or five years and then opened up my own business. And that's sort of, you know, where I'm at today. I work a lot in Canada and a lot in the United States, and I'm really grateful to be able to do it in two diverse places. And that's sort of my journey as a casting director. All right, so let's talk about the demo reel. By definition, a demo reel is a collage of your best published work. It should be maybe 60 to 90 seconds, and I would say three or four pieces of your very best material. However, don't be so consumed with getting published work that you put things on your demo reel that don't best showcase your skills as an actor. And also, the focus should be on you. For me, as a casting director, I would much rather see a beautifully recorded, well-lit monologue or comedy skit or song, something that really showcases what you can do as a performer versus putting something on there that is you know, from a film or from a commercial or publish that doesn't do so. Let's say, for instance, you're in a film you're an Olive Garden restaurant server and your line is, more breadsticks, more breadsticks. That doesn't really showcase your skills as an actor. Perhaps you're in a KFC commercial, you're SOC, you're eating a chicken leg, it's beautifully shot, published work, but that probably doesn't best showcase what you can do as an actor. So my rule of thumb is pick pieces that truly make you shine. And for me, a demo reel is like a business card in motion for an actor. So I'm okay with sort of breaking the traditional rules and putting, um, you know, I guess homemade uh, material on a demo reel as long as the quality is professional and, and really looks great. So what's the biggest mistake a performer can make when auditioning? I'll tell you from lots of experience, it's believing in yourself. As a performer, when you walk in that audition room, if you don't walk in believing you're the perfect person for that role, you're the only person for that role, whether it's true or not, if you don't believe it, how are you gonna inspire me as the casting director to believe in you? So you've really gotta find that uh, inner self-confidence. You've gotta walk in with confidence, charisma, and also being super comfortable. Those are the three C's um, that I think any actor should really exude when they walk into an audition room. So believing yourself is sort of the biggest pitfall. I think my best two pieces of advice for anyone beginning uh, as an actor, model, performer, is to always audition and to do your homework. If you think that you're right for a role, you should audition. Every time you audition, you get a little bit better, a little more comfortable in your skin, you make mistakes, you learn from your mistakes. I learn from my mistakes every time I cast a film. Just when I think I might know it all, I learned something I didn't know. I learned from my peers. I learned from fellow casting directors that I work with in other markets. I think the same holds true for an actor, and you should also do your homework. For me, acting is sort of like learning a language. When I started learning French, I practiced with other French speakers. I moved to a French environment. I did extracurricular things in French, watched movies in French. The same thing for an actor. You have to really immerse yourself in your craft and environment to excel. So what can a performer do to land an audition? There are some things out of your control and there are certain things that you can control. As an actor, you want to have the right professional output um, that sort of get your foot in the door. You need a great headshot, a reel, um, to be with an agent, to be taken you know, seriously. An actor really should have a great agency. So those are sort of the three things that will get your foot in the door. And then there's things out of your control. 
Um, it's a very subjective industry and oftentimes we're given specs as casting directors and we choose you based on sometimes first and foremost look and then talent and so on and so forth. So as long as you're, you know, promoting yourself in a professional manner and suggesting on jobs that you are appropriate for, you know, don't suggest yourself as a hot buxom babe when you're a 50 year old housewife, right? Make sure that you're appropriate for the roles. My answer is yes, it is okay. It's what one should do. If you are with an agency, you should definitely suggest yourself with your agent's name on there. Actors and agents have to form a really great bond and trust in working together. An actor should not do anything sort of, you know, outside of the knowledge of their agent. You've got to trust each other and work together as a great team. From a casting standpoint, we certainly take you more seriously if you do have an agent, so it works in your interest to let us know that from the get-go. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about wardrobe. From the moment you walk in that door, it's my job as a casting director to envision you for that part. And coming in dressed to suggest can certainly make me believe you as that character. The key things with wardrobe are you shouldn't be over the top. Don't go rent crazy costumes. Don't come in with crazy props. Um, but do your research. Do your homework. Make sure that you come in looking the role, looking the part. You don't want anything that's going to hinder your performance. Make sure that you're wearing things that are fuss-free. Um, you know, I did a film for James Franco called As I Lay Dying, which he directed and starred in, and it was based on a William Faulkner novel. It was set in rural Mississippi in the 1930s, and we were casting for two teen girls, Kate and Cora. And, you know, they were poor country girls who lived out in the sticks. Um, the young ladies that came in to audition who wore little sundresses and sandals, minimal makeup, it looked very plain Jane. I instantly thought, wow, she'd be great for this part. Versus the teen girls that came in all done up in heels and big hair and makeup. You know, I had to really work to see that they could be that role. So there's things you can do as an actor that can really open our eyes and make us want to see you for that part. And I think dressing to suggest is certainly very important. Make sure you do your homework and research as a performer. Well, of course, it's amazing to be with one of the top agencies in any city or any market, but I think what's more important, instead of obsessing with, I must get with this agency, is especially for a performer to look for an amazing agent. Um, there's agencies of all sizes, from very large agencies to boutique agencies, and there's fantastic agents who work super hard for you. So I think it's most important to find an agent that you really sort of gel and jive with, that you have a great rapport with, and it's about building a long-term relationship. Um, that for me is key versus I'm with the biggest and best agency. Sometimes the biggest and best may not be the best for you. Well, I think my biggest sort of pet peeve in general about the industry and working, you know, in both Canada and the US for 16 years is that I find a lot of clients don't really follow their gut, um, follow their instincts. You know, they want to book a sure thing. Um, they're scared to take chances. As casting directors, I love to take chances. You know, it's really easy to sort of bring in the ringers and make sure you're covered. And you want to do a little bit of that uh, from a business standpoint. But for me, I always try to save room for people I've never seen before. For me, it's exciting as a casting director to, to discover new talent, to take chances on people. Somebody took a chance on me when they booked me in my first film, so I know how important that is for an actor um, to sort of get their foot in the door and you know to really move forward in their career. So I find from working with clients, I would love for them to really follow their gut instinct and take chances on, on unknown talent um, versus always wanting to book a sure thing. Well, I'd have to give, I guess, the most thanks to the three ladies of Jigsaw at the time that I was there, Shasta Lutz, Tara O'Grady, and Melissa Casson. They truly, you know, trained me and, and taught me the ropes of casting, not only from a technical standpoint of how to do, you know, casting, but also um, how to deal with clients. You know, your people skills are just as important as your business skills and your eye in casting. And I'm super grateful. You know, there's moments today when I pull on things that I've learned or I think about things that they've said to me or taught to me. I will never forget it and always be extremely grateful for that experience. I wouldn't be sitting here today without um, the help of all three of those amazing, talented women. And for that, I'm extremely grateful.